Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Excel lesson. We're going to shift gears here from accounting to Excel. So in this first lesson, we are going to be focusing on cell referencing and very basic Excel formulas. Um, I highly recommend that before we get started, you click the link in the description and go to our website. If you scroll down to watch and practice, you'll see that there is a link here that will take us to the Excel spreadsheet. Now, uh, this Excel spreadsheet is technically Google Sheets right now. So since we are dealing with Excel, I highly recommend that you download the Excel spreadsheet and that way you can do it in Excel. Now, if you do not have a subscription to Excel, then you can go ahead and do most of what we're going to do in this Excel Google Sheet. But again, I uh, highly recommend if you can do it in Excel. In order to download an Excel, you're going to click File, Download, and Microsoft Excel. Again, you're going to go to File in the top left corner. Click Download and click on Microsoft Excel. Now, once you have your Excel file open, you're going to click on Enable Editing up at the top. And then we will be on the first tab, Lesson 1, Cell Referencing. Let me zoom in here. There we go. All right, so in this lesson, like I said before, we're going to be going over cell referencing and very, very basic Excel formulas. So in practice scenario 1A, we have a two and a four, and they want us to add cells C6 and C7 together. We are going to be doing that down here in cell C9. Now, whenever you start a formula, so us adding this together, this would be considered a formula. The first thing you are going to do is type in an equal sign on your keyboard. There are some other ways to start formulas, but this is the most common. Now that we've started our formula, we need to add these two cells together. So I am going to click on cell C6. If you would prefer to physically type in a C and a six on your keyboard, that works too. I tend to find clicking on the cell to be a little bit more efficient. Now to add them together, you're going to enter in a plus sign from your keyboard and then click on C7. So now we have this cell referenced. So what does cell referencing mean? We are referencing the individual cells from our spreadsheet. So for example, could we do regular math in this formula? Yeah, we could. So I could do two plus four there. Uh, go ahead and try doing this first actually. Equals two plus four and put enter on your keyboard, you'll notice it'll do the math for you. But if we want to do cell referencing, that's where we're going to click on cell C6 plus cell C7, and now try clicking enter on your keyboard. And notice that it's still going to calculate that as six. Now, the reason why cell referencing is so important in Excel is practice scenario 1B. Change the number in cell C7 C7 to 10 and watch how your cell referenced output in cell C9 changes. So we need to change this cell to 10. So just click on the cell, type in a 10, and you'll see that we have that blinking cursor. That means that it hasn't been officially inputted yet. Go ahead and press enter on your keyboard. And there you go. Notice that our output in cell C9 updates with this new information. That means that I could change this to any number and it would end up doing the math for me. All right, let's go down to C, uh, 1C. So here we are going to be subtracting cell C20 from C19. So now we're doing the same thing, but now we're practicing subtraction. So in order to start, we are going to use our equal sign, equals, and we are going to be subtracting the one from the five. So let's do five minus one, that's C19. Again, you can type it in if you'd like to. I think it's easier to click. You are going to press the minus sign on your keyboard and then click 
C20. And then again, to go ahead and lock it in, for get a return, you're going to click the enter key on your keyboard. So five minus one is four. Or we could change that to something crazy and it'll do the math for us. Okay. 1D, let's look at multiplying. So we have eight times seven. Again, we're gonna start our formula by doing an equal sign. We are going to click on the eight, that is C27. Now, in order to multiply, we are going to put an asterisk, that's that little star. So we're going to use an asterisk to multiply. This is Excel's way of communicating multiplication. We cannot use a, an X, right? An X won't do anything for us. We need to use the asterisk. The asterisk is multiplication. Uh, times C28, click on the seven. So eight times seven, go ahead and click enter on your keyboard. 56. And again, if I go ahead and I update this to something crazier, and this is usually why it's so useful. If you're doing something like trying to find the total cost of a bunch of goods or something like that, where these can change, this is why it's very important to know how to do cell referencing. Practice scenario 1E, we need to divide cell C35 by cell C36. So we're doing 10 divided by six. So again, I'm sure you're getting used to it now. We're going to enter that equal sign, click on your 10, and you notice it automatically does the cell for you. The div uh, division symbol is a forward slash in Excel, and click on the six. 10, that's C35 divided by C36. And you'll notice probably as we've been going through these, um, Excel is really big on color coding. So the C35 is in blue. You'll notice that that cell is now has a little bit of blue shading and border. And C36 is in red. You'll notice that Excel has the blue shade or the red shading and border. Uh, go ahead and click enter on your keyboard. It's complete. Now, once you're done with all of these, if you ever do need to edit them, Notice if I click once on that cell, nothing changes. I can't see my formula, except I can go up to the formula bar to see my formula. Also, and by the way, you can edit in your formula bar, but you can also, if you do want to see what's being referenced, you can double click the cell. So go ahead and double click that cell. And now you can see what your formula was and what is being referenced. Lastly, let's reformat this cell to be only two decimal places. So in order to format, you're going to go up here to our number section. We should be on our home tab. And you'll notice these two with the zeros and the decimal and the blue arrows. Um, these are notorious for confusing people who are using Excel. Um, I mix them up all the time. So here for doing the left, we are moving the decimal place more to the left, which means we're adding some numbers. The right means we're decreasing the number of decimal places. So here we are going to bring it down to two decimal places. And then a quick little pro tip. Uh, let's go ahead and increase it a bunch. One more. Notice if I increase it to a certain extent, I start getting these pound symbols. Uh, what the pound symbols represent is that the number is too big to fit in the cell. So if you ever see something like this, just go ahead and whatever column you're in, go to the right, hover until you get the double arrows, click and drag to increase the width of the column. And you'll notice now it's visible. Okay. So that's it for this first lesson for basic cell referencing and basic formulas. In lesson two, we will be going over functions. So it's just going to be a little introduction to the sum func function and the average function. And until next time, uh, thank you so much for watching and happy studying.